social theory. I think it will not even present him. So thank you, Jean-Michel, for, for this talk. Thank you very much, Sylvain, for the presentation. I also want to thank the organizer and uh, Luz, Enrique, Alberto, and uh, Sylvain for giving me the opportunity to give uh, this talk. So the title is uh, Rapid and Finite and Stabilization, and the outline of the talk, uh, uh, the outline of the talk is, is here. I will start with some motivations, and I will give some results in finite dimension. And then we are going to move to the case of partial differential equations. The motivation, so this is the classical example that you can see in every book in control theory. You have a cart which is moving on a line. Above the cart, there is a road. And this equilibrium is unstable because there is a center of rotation. So either the, the road is going to fall down on the right or it's going to fall down on the left, sorry. And then you, you try to stabilize this uh, unstable point by applying a control which depends on the state. So you apply a force which depends on the state in order to have a point which is now stable, even asymptotically stable, in fact. So there is many experiments about that. Here, this is some experiment with a double inverted pendulum. So the cart is a on the bottom and you have these two roads and there is now two center of rotations and the new one is here. So this is something which is very unstable, but still you see, you can, the, the machine, thanks to the feedback, succeeds to stabilize very well this equilibrium. This is something that we, we cannot do. What we can do is what is doing uh, James Stewart in the movie Vertigo, he has a wall stick on the top of his, of his finger and he moves the finger in order to stabilize the point which is unstable without the, the feedback loop. This we can, we can make it and this is very, very classical. So this is the aspect of stabilization. And there is something also which is interesting is rapid stabilization. This is an example. This is uh, for the river La Sambre and the river La Meuse in Belgium. So you have, uh, in the, the picture is divided in two parts. In front of you have the, there is no controls, no feedback. So the water is going below the, the gates. And on the back, the gates are moving depending on some feedback that you construct. And then you are going to see that on the back, the convergence is much quicker. You see, on the back, thanks to the feedback law, you have a better conversion to the equilibrium. So this is a case where the point is already asymptotically stable, but you, are, you want to have a better conversion thanks to the feedback. So this is a very natural problem. So now we move to, to finite dimensional control system. And then I, in this case, I will give some results. So we have the control system, which takes the form y dot is equal to f of y and u. Y is called the state and u is the control. Y is in Rn and the state, the control is in Rm. And we assume that f of zero, zero is equal to zero. And you want to construct a feedback. This is a map from which gives from y, it gives u of y, such that u of zero is equal to zero. And such that for the closed loop system, which is y dot is equal to f of y and u of y, the equilibrium zero is asymptotically stable, locally at least. So this map is called the feedback or feedback law. And the dynamic y dot is equal to f of y, u of y is called the closed loop system. There is a problem of regularity of uh, the feedback law, which is very important. At least if you have the u which is continuous, you have some robustness. That is, if you do some mistakes, some small mistakes and everything will behave well. But if you is discontinuous, you have to be very good, careful about the robustness of the feedback loop. In these talks, the, the feedback will be always continuous with respect to the state. So we'll, not, we'll have no, this problem of robustness is not an issue in this case. There is another property of a control system, which is controllability, which is quite natural. You want to know if it is possible to move from Y0 to Y1. And if this is possible, you say that the system is controllable. 
what so why zero could, could be close to the equilibrium and maybe local controllability can be maybe large and this is global controllability there is also the problem of the of the time but at least for a linear system which has a simpler system y dot is equal to a y plus b u you have this uh, very important result in 1960 this is the Kalman Horn condition which tells you that the linear control system y dot equal a y plus b u is controllable on zero t if and only if the span of a to the power i b u where u is in r m and i is between zero and n minus one is equal to all of r n and we stop at uh, n minus one because of Kelly Hamilton a to the power n can be expressed in terms of a to the power i with i less or equal to n minus one so there is no need to keep going and you see this condition does not depend on time. That is, for a linear system, if you can control it in a one million year, you can control it in one second, which is not the case for nonlinear system. Now we move to the case of nonlinear system. F now is nonlinear, and you have some equilibrium, which usually will be zero, zero, but here it's called Ye, Ue. And there are many notions of controllability. The notion that I'm going to use here is small time local controllability, the states will be close to Ye, the control will be close to Ue, and the time will be small. And the property of small time local controllability is described on the next slide. You have this property, whatever is the red ball, you have a smaller ball, such as if you have two points in the small ball, then you can move from the first point to the second point by using a control which is close to Ue and by remaining in the red ball. So this is something very local. The state is close to Ye, the control is close to Ue, and the time is close to zero. Because this is you arrive at Y1 in time epsilon. And now you want to know if you have a given uh, control system, some equilibrium, and you want to know if uh, this system is locally controllable in small time at this equilibrium point. And then there is a something which is very important, and this is uh, related to uh, an advice uh, which is very classical from Nirenberg, when you, you have no more ID to solve a given problem, he proposed this uh, method, which is, have you tried to linearize? So we have a nonlinear system, we linearize it. So we get y dot equal to a y plus b u, where a and b are given in one. And thanks to the inverse mapping theorem, which works also as well in infinite dimension, you get that if the linearized control system is controllable, then the nonlinear system is small time locally controllable. So this is a very important result, very classical, but very important. And now if we consider the problem of stabilizability for a linear control system, there is a, the pole shifting theorem, which tells you that if the linearized control system is controllable, then you, by using the feedback law, so you, you plug the feedback law y gives ky, so the closed loop system is y dot is equal to a plus b k y, and you look to the eigenvalue of a plus b k, and you can put the eigenvalue where you want. This is what is uh, given here. So as a corollary, you get that if you can control the linear, the linear control system, it's always possible to stabilize it because you can put all the eigenvalue, for example, at minus one. And then you get asymptotic stability of the closed loop system. And in the case of a nonlinear control system, you first linearize it. And if the linearized control system is controllable, then you can use a feedback law which is linear to stabilize it. And the same feedback law, thanks to the first Yapunov theorem on the eigenvalue, you will get that the same feedback law is going to stabilize a nonlinear system locally, of course. It's not a global result, it's a local result. And now if we consider the rapid exponential stabilization, so there is many notions of rapid stabilization, but one of the more classical one is the following one. You require that for any positive real number nu, you can find the feedback law, which depends on nu. So this y gives u of y, such that for the closed loop system, y dot is equal to f of y u of y, you have the inequality too, which gives you that you have an exponential decay rate with a 
uh, rate which is at least equal to new. And for linear system which are controllable, you can make it because you can put the eigenvalue where you want. So you can decide, okay, I put the eigenvalue at minus two to the minus two new, and you get the, the result. And you can also apply it for a nonlinear system by using linearization. So let me present an example on this cut inverted pendulum. You write the dynamics, which is y dot is equal to f of y and u, where f is given on the slide. You compute the linearized system, you get the two matrix A and B, you check that you have the controllability of the linearized control system, and then you can stabilize the nonlinear system rapidly because you use the feedback law which stabilizes it rapidly for the linearized system, and it will be the same for the nonlinear system. Thanks to the Lyapunov theorem, the first Lyapunov theorem. Now, I want to show you on a very simple example that it's, the situation is not so good for nonlinear system. I present this counter example. We have y1 dot is equal to y1 minus y2 to the cube. y2 dot is equal to u. And the state is y1, y2, and the control is u. If you compute the linear control system, you get y1 dot equal y1, y2 dot is equal to u, which is not controllable because you cannot change the dynamics of y1. However, you can prove that the nonlinear control system one is small time locally controllable. You can use the return method or you can use iterated D bracket and you get that this nonlinear control system is small time locally controllable. Now you, now you want to stabilize it by your feedback, which is smooth, let's say C1. And so you propose uh, uh, this feedback law, so you get uh, uh, the second component is u of y, if you go back to the previous slide, and then you do the linearization and you get that x prime of zero is this matrix one zero k one k two. And you see that you cannot have both the trace of x prime of zero is less or equal than zero. And the determinant of x prime of zero is a, is a larger or equal than zero. So the point is always unstable. If you use a feedback, which is of class C one. But you can make it with uh, sorry, you can make it with a, a, a feedback which is nonlinear. This is just proposed by Dewanza and Martin, which is which is not smooth, which is only continuous. It's Alderian. And let me now show you that if you look for feedback which are only Alderian, you can try to get something better than a rapid stabilization you can get stabilization in finite time. You, you have this very simple example, y dot is equal to u, the state is y, the control is u, and then you use the control u of y, which is minus three divided by two, the absolute value of y to the power of one third, multiplied by the sine of y. You can compute explicitly the solution, and you see that not only you have the asymptotic stability, but you have the finite time stability, because you get that y of t, is equal to t is equal to zero if t is at least equal to the absolute value of the norm of y zero to the power two third. So now there is something which is very interesting is to try when you have a, a control system which is uh, controllable, can you stabilize it in finite time? So the definition now of finite time stability is very natural one that is you require the stability first. And then instead of having the convergence which is asymptotic, you require that you have the convergence in finite time. That is, if you have a solution of the closed loop system, then y of t is equal to zero if t is larger than equal to tau. And the finite time stabilizability is just the same. Now you want to find the feedback u of y, which gives you this finite time stability. And the question now is if you have a a controllable system, can you stabilize it in finite time? And this is really very interesting for, and it's open for many, many equations, many partial differential equations. So I think this is a, something that can be studied. Let's just start with the simplest case, which is a linear control system in finite dimension. Then you can prove, in fact, that this is indeed the case. You can always stabilize it in finite time and even in small time. 
And the proof is here. I'm going to start with a very simple example, which is this control system. Y1 dot is equal to Y2, Y2 dot is equal to U. So this is a linear system. The state is of dimension two, Y1, Y2, and the control is of dimension one. You try to stabilize it in finite time. So there is another important Nyanberg advice, which is, have you tried the dimension two? And we go a step further and we move to the dimension one. That is, you consider y1 dot is equal to y2. And you say that the, the state is y1, the control is y2. And then you know it's possible because we just saw that before. We define this uh, feedback law, which is given by three, and you get then the stabilization in finite time. But of course, this is not exactly the, the control problem that you want to consider. We want to consider one instead of two. But there is something which is uh, called the backstepping, and we will see many applications of this method, which is the following one. You have the control system, which is uh, given by one, where the state is y1, y2, and the control is u2. And you want to, to see if you can do something if you have the the simplest, the, the, the simpler control system, which is y1 dot is equal to f of y1, y2, where the state is y1 and the control is y2. So you see that you decrease the dimension of, of the dimension of n2, of dimension of y2. So we have something which is simpler. And now we assume that if we consider the control system two, you can stabilize it by a feedback law, which is of class C1, it's called y2 bar, that is for, Zero is asymptotically stable for y1 dot is equal to f of y1, y2 bar of y1. That is, you see, in, in mechanics, it's, it's uh, the related to the following problem. You assume that you can control the speed and you stabilize with the speed. But in practice, this is not the speed which is controlled. What is controlled is the force, which is acceleration. So you have to go one step further. And so we, explain me how it's working. Uh, you have this uh, feedback that you can stabilize it with a white, uh, which stabilizes uh, the system uh, y1 dot equal f y1 y2, which is called y2 bar. So you have a Lyapunov function for this system, for the, feed, for the closed loop system. So this is a function which is decreasing when you follow the flow and it is minimal at zero which is called capital L of y1. And then you define the new Lyapunov function, V of y1, y2, which is L of y1 plus one over two, y2 minus y2 bar of y1 square. So the idea is to, spin, to penalize the fact that y2 is not equal to y2 bar. And then you consider this Lyapunov function for the control system one. And you try to see if you can make it decrease by using u2. And it turns out to be possible. You just compute V dot. And you see that if you choose a U, which is defined on the slide, then you get that V dot is negative if the norm of Y1 plus the norm of Y2 is small enough. So you succeed to stabilize the initial system one. But you see for that you need, you, you see in the definition of U, you see that Y2 bar prime appears. So for this construction, you need to, it seems that you need to have C1. And indeed, there is some problem. If you try to do the, the same for our toy model, y1 dot is equal to y2, y2 dot is equal to u2. You choose y2 bar as defined on the slide. You define v as before. And then you have a problem. You cannot compute v dot because v is not differentiable. But the idea is, is to try to penalize the fact that y2 is not equal to minus one, one to the power alpha by some other function. You define this function phi of y1, y2, which is now C1, and which has the property that phi of y1, y2 is always more or equal than zero with equality if and only if y2 is equal to minus y1 to the power alpha. And so this is a Lyapunov function that you use. You compute V dot, and you see that there is no problem. You can check that if you define u as by three, if you take k large enough, then you get v dot is less or equal than minus delta v to the power two times alpha divided by one plus alpha, and you get the stabilization in finite time if two times alpha is larger than one. And you can keep going. You can keep going. That is, you can do this control system one, 
which is a, the classical form, this is the Brunowski form of uh, every controllable system. Every controllable system, thanks to a change of variable, if the control is of dimension one, but you can do something similar if the dimension of the control is larger, you can transform it in the control system one. And so with this, you see that you can stabilize every controllable system, which is linear in finite time. And if the system is nonlinear, but the linearized control system is controllable, you can use this, uh, the same feedback law. If you choose well the weight, uh, you get also the synthetic stability, the stabilization in finite time. But in uh, 1983, Broquet gives some uh, necessary condition to be able to stabilize a nonlinear system. He shows this very interesting result that if the control system y dot is equal to f of y u is locally asymptotically stable, the point of interest is y e is equal to zero, u e is equal to zero, then the image by f of every neighborhood of zero, zero in Rn cross Rm has to be a neighborhood of zero in Rn. And there are plenty of controllable systems, small time locally controllable, which does not satisfy this property. Here is an example. This is a quadrupter, a slide, but so usually it can fly, but sometimes it is interesting in, in order to save batteries to move on the plane. Then it's called a slider. And you can give the equation. So this is a, the picture of the slider. Uh, and then you have this dynamics. Uh, you don't need to, to look to the in details to the equations, so M is the mass of the, the slider, I is the, center, the moment of inertia of the slider about this sensor of rotation. And you have this dynamics where tau one and tau two are the controls. You, so this is a second order equation. So as usual, we transform it in the first order equation by using these variables, which are given in Y. And you arrive to the control system, Y dot is equal to F of Y and U where f is given by two. So you can prove that this system is small time locally controllable, thanks to, you can make it by uh, using iterated Lie bracket, but you can also check that it does not satisfy the bracket condition, because if you want to solve uh, equation one, where the data is on the right, and the unknown is y1, y2, y3, and so on, u1 and, and u2, and you, you cannot solve it because you want, uh, we also want to have that if delta is small, then the solution is small. And you look, if you look to the second equation, you get, you get u1 cosine y5 is equal to zero. And since y5 is close to zero, cosine is not zero, so you must have u1 equal to zero. And then if you look to the first component, you see that since u1 is equal to zero, it has to be equal to zero, so it cannot be equal to delta if delta is not zero. So this system is small time locally controllable, but you cannot stabilize it by a feedback law. And then the idea is to use a feedback which depends also on time. That is, instead of using u of y, you use u of t and y. And I would like to, to show you a, a general result that you can prove. I need to, to use some extra assumption. Controllability, local controllability tells you that if you have some initial data which is close to zero, then you can reach zero in time capital T. But it doesn't say that this U depends continuously on A. And I use some extra assumption. I, I assume that I can find a U which depends continuously on the initial data, which allows you to send the initial data to zero. So there is this novelty, which is a continuity, the continuity in the sense given by one. It seems to be uh, much more restrictive, but in fact, there is no example of a uh, and this is very challenging open problem. Is it possible in finite dimension? Is it possible to prove that if you have a system which is analytic, I'm sure that there are counter examples in the C infinity setting, you assume that there are small time local controllability. Can you have this continuity with respect to the initial data? Of course, this is not for all controls, but the question is, does there exist a control which depends on the initial data, which allows you to send the initial data to zero? In time t. So this is very challenging uh, open problem. It could be true, in fact. Uh, 
And then you have this general result. If you assume that the dimensions is not two and three, if the system is analytic and, le, and you have this local control, controllability, but with, with a control which is smooth, which is continuous with respect to the initial data, then you can always stabilize it in finite time by using a feedback which is continuous and uh, depends on time, and which is periodic with respect to time. So there are examples, if you go back to the slider, in practice, it's always complicated to get uh, for a nonlinear system uh, stabilization in finite time. But in this case, you, you can get it. If you use the previous proposition, then you can see that in fact, you can make it, but we construct with uh, Brigitte and Brigitte Andrea Novel and Wilfried Pericuti, we construct a specific feedback law, which gives you this stabilization in finite time. Now we, we move to PDE and we try to do, if we can do something about the subject of stabilization in finite time or rapid stabilization. So we consider the simplest equation, not maybe not the simplest, but this is uh, one of the simplest, yt minus yx, x is equal to zero. So this is the heat equation on some interval, zero, one, and the control is on the, on the right. It's known that this system is, uh, exactly controllable, it's still controllable. And we, we look for the stabilization, rapid exponential stabilization, and then the finite time stabilization. So the first theorem that we want to prove is that for any lambda, there is a feedback which depends on lambda, u lambda, uh, which is linear in fact, so that for the closed loop system, which is uh, equation two, then you have the inequality three. So this uh, result, I, I don't know who proved, so this is a theorem, I don't know who really proves the, the, the theorem for the first time, but at least it's a consequence of uh, David Russell result in 1976, where he proved something much stronger. He proved that you can, some kind of pole shifting theorem in the case of the heat equation. But I want to show you another proof uh, due to Boscovich, uh, Pestic and Liu, and which relies on backstepping. As we mentioned before, backstepping is used to stabilize infinite dimension. If you have the system y dot is equal, x dot is equal to f of x and y, y dot is equal to u, where u is a control. If you can stabilize where x dot is equal to f of x and y, where x is a state and y is a control, then you can stabilize maybe the first system. And there is some application to PD, and there are more applications in this book that I'm going to tell them. Advertising. Okay. And then uh, I want to show you the method by Boscovich, Balog, and Christic, which is of a different nature because they, and this is something which is very interesting, they do the discretization. So they have a finite, dim finite dimensional control system, which is linear, and they use the backstepping on this finite dimensional control system. And the backstepping, when, you, when the mesh is going to zero, is going to give you a transformation which sends the initial control system to a much simpler uh, system. That is much simpler in the sense for this new system, you can get easily the asymptotic stability. And this is a very interesting tool, I think. And uh, there is a book that I recommend by Christine and schmidt in 2008, where there is a survey on this method. Let's try to apply this idea to our control system, yt minus yx, x is equal to zero. So this transformation that, he get at the, that they get at the end is a, second, is a Volterra transformation of the second kind, which I'm going to give you later on. So you, you want to transform the control system one into the control system two, thanks to some transformation. And you see for the system two, things is very good because you multiply the, the equation by z, you take v equals zero, you integrate by part and you get the inequality three. So for this system, you get the, the rapid stabilization. So you, get, you get the exponential stability at the rate lambda, but lambda can be arbitrary. So if you succeed to transform the system one into the system two, then you have the result. 
So they use, for that, they use the transformation, the Volterra transformation of the second kind, which is given by one. This structure comes from the, comes from the backstepping, which gives you that you have some triangular, triangular shape. So it's why you get this, the integral from zero to x1 and not the integral from zero to one. And this is very interesting because Volterra transformation, we know that they are invertible. Of course, it's very important that uh, the map, why it gives z is invertible because you want to know that if z goes to zero, then y also goes to zero. So you want to transform the control system, which is given by y into the system, which is given by three, plus the control, which is v. And then you, you, you have some equation for that. You, you get some equation on k. So this is a big, you see on this slide, the, the, you get the form of the feedback that you get at the end is something which is not local. It's the integral from zero to one of k one s y of s, yes. And if you uh, consider the equation for k that you have to satisfy in order that the, the transformation sends the first system to the second one is given by a wave equation. You see, you get k one one is the derivative two times with respect to x1. So you have a wave equation on a triangle and you have boundary condition on this triangle. And you want to prove that there is a solution of this. This is the only thing which remains to be done. And for that, they, they use a method that I have used later on. They, they perform a change of variable, which is given on the slide. Then they have this new equation, which is given by y by one, and then they integrate two times equation one, and they get some integral equation, which is given on this slide. This is equation one. And then for that, they just use some iterative method. You want to find a, a fixed point of this map, uh, G is equal to something which depends on G, and you define inductively G to the power Gn by this formula, and you can compute everything, in fact. It's very interesting, you can compute what is Gn, and at the end, you get K. K is given by the formula three, where I is the Bessel function of the second type. So you, so you have the result. You can always stabilize, and the feedback in, in some sense is rather explicit. So this is very interesting. Something which is uh, Interesting to point out is estimate on K. If you look to the formula which is given here, you can, you can check on, on some books that you have this inequality one, which is given in, in the books. And for the inverse transform, you get something which is better. So you, you get the estimate on L. L gives you the inverse transform and you get this new estimate, which is five. And with that, uh, you, you have a way to get, um, to prove again that the heat equation is null controllable by using, there is no Kerleman estimate, there is no moment theory. And I think it's rather elementary because you have just these estimates that you can find that they are already proved. Because you point out that uh, if you use this, uh, this feedback, which depends on lambda, then you arrive to the inequality one, which tells you that at the end, y of tau is less than c times lambda exponential minus that lambda tau exponential c square root of lambda, the norm of y zero. Something that you can find also in the paper by Lebo and Robiano. So you see the idea is that now lambda is much larger than square root of lambda. And so you can divide the interval of time and choose the sequence of lambda, lambda n, for example, is equal to n to the power eight. You start at time zero, t1 equal to zero, you define tn, and during the interval of time tn, tn plus one, you use the feedback which was defined before. And then you get that at the end, y is zero, y of t, as t goes to min t minus one, t, t minus is converging to zero, and this is the same for the control. So you have a new method, to prove the new controllability of the wheat equation in small time. And this estimate, uh, which are crucial, uh, you can find it, uh, find them also in uh, the paper by Lebo and Robiano in 1995 in every dimension. But you can also prove it uh, 
uh, for more general equations and yt minus yxx is equal to zero. So you have this now, the, the control system now is three. So you have this A and C and the control is yt1 is equal to u of t. The target system is the same that, except that you put minus lambda z. So you have again some kernel that you want to, to study. And you can prove that the kernel exists and you have the estimate which is given by one and two. So you recover in this case that you have the null controllability in small time. Not only that, you can also try to use that in order to stabilize the system. But in this case, there is a little problem. You could say, okay, I'm using, you see, on Tn, Tn plus one, uh, I have this uh, control and Tn, Tn plus one, I have this control which allows you to, to get some decrease, yes? But this control is very large. So you can see that you do not get, uh, in fact, stability with this feedback loop. Because you, you, if you start at zero, you converge to zero, but if you start at a time which is close to zero, you will explode. You, there will be no convergence. So it's not, it does give the answer to the stabilization, but you can prove that, uh, we are going to prove that it's always possible to stabilize in finite time by your feedback, which depends on time, the, this uh, heat equation. So first we, and this is always a problem for stabilization. Stabilization, you have to use to study the closed loop system. And the closed loop system, in general, there is no result about the existence of the solution to the closed loop system because it's some equations which are of very different natures and the equations that are studied by people. So you have to prove some theorem and here's an example. You assume that you have this property periodic. You have this sequence of time Tn and the, the, the feedback that you use is uh, of class C1 on Tn, Tn plus one. And you have this Lipschitz condition. Then you can prove that the closed loop system is well posed on the interval zero T. This is on this slide. But now you want to go further because of course you do not want to stay at capital T. You have to keep going. And for that, you need to, to add some extra assumption in order to get through the time capital T. And the possibility is just to add this property P4. And then you get that the closed loop system in well pose for every time. Every time you get the well posedness of this system. And with this, if you change, of course, the property P4 is not satisfied by the control that I present before, but you can modify it in order to have this property and keep the asymptotic the stability in finite time. So you get this result that it's always possible to stabilize in finite time by a feedback law, the, the heat equation in dimension one. Uh, but there is a challenging open problem. You see in the finite dimension, when you have a linear system, it's always possible to stabilize it in finite time by using a feedback which depends only on the state, not on time. And this, we don't know how to make it. So this is, I think, a very challenging problem. Try to stabilize in finite time the heat equation by using a feedback which depends only on the state, does not depend on time. This is very interesting, I think. Now I would like to say some few words about the ra rapid stabilization of uh, the cord leg de Vries equations. Uh, so this is a, a picture sh showing you what is the interest of the KDP equation. You have the height of the water uh, with respect to some equilibrium, Y. And under some assumption, then the, the equation which gives you Y is given by the cordec de Vries equation, which is one. And then we are going to use some control and we consider different type of control. The first idea is to use the Neumann condition, the so white XTL, this is a control. And for Y, you have YT0 is equal to YTL, which is equal to zero. So there is some nice result due to Lionel Rosier, which tells you that the linearized control system is controllable in time t if and only if L does not belong to the set capital N, which is defined on the slide. And from that, 
he gets that if L does not belong to N, then the KDB control system is locally controllable in small time. So what about stabilization? Let's just first start with some uh, other control, um, control system. Now you, we use again the, the Cordex debris equation, but the control is not the same. The control is yt0. And now you have white xtl, which is zero, and ytl, which is zero. And then Lionel Rosier proves in 2004 that this system is small time null controllable locally. And with uh, Eduardo Serpa, we succeed to prove that uh, you can always stabilize it with a feedback law, which gives you some exponential decay rate, which is as large as you want. So you fix some lambda, there is X, a feedback law, which depends on lambda, so that you have this property too, so local result. And we use the idea of backstepping. You, we, we try to transform the Y system into the Z system, which is given by three. And the this, this system three is, is the same if you multiply the equation by Z, integrate by part, then you get the exponential decay, which is given by four. So the, the point is to try to transform the Y system into the Z system, thanks to this K, which depends on lambda. So the equation for K now is here. You see, it's not a wave equation. Now it's not uh, really an equation with a specific type. It's uh, this equation one. And you want to prove that this equation has a solution. And we, we did essentially as uh, done by Boscovic, Christic, and you. We perform some change of variable and then transform the equation into some uh, integral equation, use some fixed point arguments, and get the existence of k. And uh, later on, uh, Shenkyu Xian succeeded to prove the estimates that I showed before for the heat equation. So the estimate given by one and uh, the equation also the, the inequality for L, which is the inverse. And then with that, again, you can prove that uh, this system is a small time locally controllable. And maybe the interesting open problem is the, the, the square root of lambda, which appear in the estimate. Maybe it's not optimal. Maybe you can try lambda to the power one third, which will be more natural for this equation where we have three derivatives. Now we go back to the the KDV equation, the initial KDV equation, let's say this is a Rosier KDV equation, and you assume that L does not belong to the critical set, and you want to stabilize the system with some exponential decay array, which is quite large. And if you try to use this type of transformation that I present before, which is here, it's not working, in fact. But you can try to use uh, so this is the result, so we succeed to do the same. If the length is not critical, we can get this feedback, which gives you this exponential decay rate. And we use something more general. We, for the transformation, we use this equation one, which in some sense, since k is arbitrary, it's every linear transformation. Every linear transformation can be put in this form. It's related to the Schwartz uh, uh, kernel theorem. And then you, you want to transform the Y system into the Z system. And then you get some equation on K. And the equation on K is given here. Delta is the Dirac mass at the origin. And in order to, you have to study this equation. You want to prove the existence of a solution K to this equation. This is the only point that you want to check. And for that, you, you can make it, and you use the fact that uh, the linearized control system is controllable because it's not possible to have this transformation if the length is critical. So for that, we, we decompose K. So first you define this operator related to the project de Vries equation with a suitable boundary condition. So this is something which is self-adjoint, screw adjoint, so you have some eigenvalue and you have some eigenfunction and we decompose the kernel on this type of, uh, on this uh, function, uh, on these eigenvalues. And then you, you, you work on the equation and you get that there is indeed an equation, the solution. In fact, if and only if the length is not critical. 
And this is something which is quite general. I, I mean, if you go back to the case of a finite dimensional control system, y dot is equal to a y plus bu. And if you assume that the system is controllable, you want to transform the first system into the second one with the transformation y equals tz and u is equal to tz plus v, the unknown are t and k. And then you can prove that the system is, if the system is controllable, then there exists always a solution which is unique. And it would be interesting to know if something similar, it's unique if the control is of dimension one. It's not unique in, in general case. Uh, it exists always whatever is the dimension of the control, but it's unique if the control is of dimension one. So it would be interesting to get also some similar results for uh, infinite dimensional control system. And this is not uh, known. We can look to this problem in some abstract point of view, but uh, we do not know if there is a solution. Now I move to the last part of the talk, which is about uh, hyperbolic system. Hyperbolic system, it's model many things. So that, for example, the height of the water and the flow rate inside the river. So the control is at the gates of the, of the pools. And you see, here there is a gate which is under repair and the, the control is the motion of the top of the gates. It can be also flowing below the gates. You have two types of gates. And the general situation is this type of equation, yt plus e of y, y, x, and you have some uh, a, a equal s of y and you have some point y star, which is in Rn. And this is some equilibrium of, this, of, the, of the equation, which means that s of y star is equal to zero. And what about what is the assumption of a of on a of y star? We assume that maybe after a uh, change of variable, then it's a diagonal matrix with uh, entries which are either positive or negative and all distinct. And then you have. Uh, you define y minus, which is the part with the positive speed, which correspond to the negative speed, which correspond to the minus on the j, and y plus correspond to the positive speed. And the control is on the boundary. So for the stabilization, it takes the form which is given by one, where part of g is given, and part of g, you can choose it. Part of g is the control. And you want to know what you can do with that. So there, there are really plenty of equations, plenty of systems which are modeled by this type of equation. There is a shower equation, the, the musical wind instrument, the road traffic. There are plenty really. Gas pipe which is very used for gas pipes. Electrical transmission line. Plenty of equations are modeled by this type of equation. Chromatography, heat exchanger, and there are many other examples which are given in my, my more recent book. And now we, we study the stabilization issue. We start with the simplest case, which is y is of dimension one. So it's just the equation y, yt minus lambda yx is equal to zero. yt1 is the control issue of t. And you want to stabilize the system as fast as possible. Because there is a minimal time now for the local control for the controllability, which is one divided by lambda. And if you just take u of t is equal to zero, you get that this is uh, you get the optimal time that is it's given on this picture. You see, uh, the, the 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 y is constant on this uh, lines of slope minus one. So you see that if the time is less than t op, there is no hope to control the system because what you get depends only on the initial data on the, on the left part of the, of the picture. But if the time is larger than t opt, then you can get the local controllability. Now, if you take the control equal to zero, then you get that if t is larger than t opt, y is equal to zero. So you get t opt is the optimal time for the controllability. But with the feedback u equal to zero, you get the convergence in the time t opt. So this is the best results that you can expect. So this is the type of pictures that I'm going to show you later on. What is in the blue means that if the feedback, you, you choose some feedback on the left, on the right, then when you are in the blue, it means that whatever is the initial data, you will get y equal to zero in the blue part. When you are in the red part, it means that uh, 
there are some initial data, such that with the feedback you use, you are not equal to zero at that point. I want to show you that uh, u equals zero is not always the best choice. But of course, the dimension has to be larger. And this phenomena start in dimension three. So we have now three components, y1, y2, and y3. The equation is given by one. So there is one positive speed and two negative speed. On the boundary on the left, you have y1 t0, which is equal to a y2 t0 plus b y3 t0. And the control is on the right, it's u1 and u2. And you want to, to see what happens if you choose first, maybe the control u is equal to zero. So we define to i, which is the inverse of the lambda i. If you use uh, u1 equal u2 equal to zero, you get that y t1 is equal to zero if t1 is equal to to one plus to two. And if a is not zero and b is equal to zero, t1 is optimal in the sense that there are some initial data such that with this control, you are not able to reach zero at a time which is less than t naught. Now assume that b is not equal to zero, then it was shown by Longwu in 2015 that the optimal time for controllability is not T1, but it is T0, which is given by the formula three. So it's a time which is smaller. And if you use U1 equal U2 equal zero, you will not get asymptotic stability. You will not get stability in time T0. You have to be a little more clever in order to have the stability in time T0. And the idea is this, if you want to have stability in time T0, the idea is that the, the point which the, the, the variable which is more complicated to control is y1. But y1 t0 by the boundary condition is a y2 t0 plus b y t y3 t0. So you try to impose that this is zero. Now, if you follow the characteristic line, you get the equation five, a y2 t0 plus b y3 t0 is equal to a y2 t minus to three, to three divided by to two plus b and so on, okay? And then the idea is to try to get zero on the right hand side. And for that, there is a simple uh, point because you, you know that uh, y3 t1 is uh, the control, is u2 t, and you just impose that u2 t is equal to minus a divided by b. So you use the fact that b is not zero, y2 t at some point, which is not on the boundary. So you see, in order to apply this feedback law, you need to know the value of y not only on the boundary, but also on uh, inside the domain. And with this feedback law, you, you have this uh, property which are given, uh, but it's maybe better to explain on, on slides with some picture. So again, when you are in the blue part and you have y1 equals zero, it means that with the feedback that we construct, what is the, whatever is the initial, the, the, the initial data, you will get when y equals zero in this blue part. And in the red part, it means that there are some initial data such that with the feedback we use, we can get y1, which is not zero. So this is a picture for y1, this is a picture for y2, and this is a picture for y3. And if you glue them together, you get this picture. And then if you compare with the, the feedback, which is y equals zero, then you see some difference with uh, the new feedback, which is not zero, you will get um, a quicker convergence, which means that sometimes uh, it's better to do something. Yes, yeah? sometimes. Uh, of course, we, we know in real life that sometimes it's better to do nothing. Yes, just wait and uh, see what's going to happen. But we see some example that uh, it's better to, to act. It's better, we'll get a better convergence with some action. And this can be generalized for more general uh, dimensions. So we have this picture now, there are plenty of eigenvalue we are in dimension N, and you have uh, this uh, boundary condition, which is given by three. And on the right, you do what you want on the, on the, for the eigenvalue, which are negative. And you have this boundary condition, which is given, and we define this to the T0, okay, this is some number. And this is the same as before. That is, this number is optimal for some special value of B, special from general generic value of B. Because 
you have these properties that uh, you look to the matrix B and you look to the matrix, the submatrix of this matrix B, which is formed by the last I colon and the last I row. So you have a square matrix and you assume that this matrix is invertible for I between one and the minimum between K and M minus one. So this is something which is generically satisfied. And then you can prove that you, you get the null controllability at the optimal time, which is T zero. And T zero, you can prove it's optimal. And you can get it also with a feedback loop. You can get it with some uh, feedback. So this, uh, the control which depends on the state. It's not open loop, it's a feedback loop. And I think that there is some, uh, okay, maybe I think I, uh, my time, I think is over. Probably I'm going to stop here because this is the part. This last part is too long. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you, Jean-Michel. Uh, so, okay, I think I'm the only one to, to have the microphone, but uh, really uh, thank you for this uh, very nice talk. Uh, maybe we have some time for question. So if you do not have a microphone, you, you can put it in the, in the chat. Maybe I, I, I stop the, the share of the screen. Is there any question? I have a question. Yes. Okay. Karine. Sure. I have a question about the first open problem. Uh, about, about, the, about the first open problem when, ah, when oui. you speak about uh, continuity with respect to the initial condition ah, yes. of the yeah. control yeah. function. Yes. So, so your uh, open problem is about finite dimension. Exactly, yes. And Fine. my question is, uh, does there exist a counter example in infinite dimension? Uh, no, I don't know that. I don't know that maybe, yes, maybe it's, it's a very good question, but I really, uh, I don't know, yeah. I don't know. Uh, that will be interesting, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yeah, I, I have. Oh, so Enrique. Okay, Enrique, si. Go on, please. Uh, it was a very elementary question. So the, the 1D heat equation, I think uh, Jean-Michel mentioned the case of variable coefficients, right? Yes. Uh, how regular do you need the diffusivity to uh, yeah. be? No, this is, a, this is an interesting part. I think we do not get the best uh, regularity. I, it's, I think this is a... The A is in H1, I think it's put, okay. So you need one delivery. It's not okay. optimal. It's not optimal yeah. for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, but for the method we use, so we, we transform this uh, the kernel equation is some wave equation. And we do not use the method by Christie and Coulter. We we use directly the wave equation and we show the sense of, uh, of a solution thanks to some uh, type of uh, energy type estimate, in fact. Okay. Mm -hmm the classical one, because there is all, not only the, the derivative of Y which appears, but also Y itself. But that would be very interesting to, to see how far we can push the method, because of course there are some very nice results when the, the coefficients are very discontinuous. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to see if we, we get the same or maybe we can go further or, or there is that we can do as best as, best as what is known already. Okay, thank you. Merci, Jean-Michel. Good question. Yeah. Is there any other question? Eduardo. Yeah, I think Eduardo. Yeah, I have a, I have a question. Well, thank you, Jean-Michel, for, for the very nice talk. Always nice. very interesting things to, to, to hear about. And, and a question is, uh, have you seen or have you tried again and uh, el, um, this backstepping or other kind of transformation for intimation Hargen than one? No, no I so try a lot, but without success. Yeah, it's very interesting. Try, but without success. Okay. Yeah, yeah I tried, yeah, but no success. Yeah. Now that would be, you see, in finite dimension, it's always possible. So the idea will be to, to, to transform the system into the system where you just have minus lambda y. Minus lambda y, yeah. In finite dimension, if the system is controllable, it's always possible. So there is some hope that maybe it's always possible to make it for the PDE case. That will be very interesting. Of course, uh, in, in general, then the, the, 
the size of the control will not be dimension one, but we know that uh, the size of the control could be any dimension, infinite dimension, but the uniqueness, the counterexample for the uniqueness if the, the control is on dimension M, M larger than one. So in the case of the PDE, of course, you, you will have some, uh, it will not, not be unique. Yeah? And sometimes it's more difficult to show when there are too many solutions. Yeah? <laughs> when you have uniqueness, you, you have only to follow one, uh, the steepest descent. <laughs> but now there are many solutions probably, so it's difficult to see. I, I, this is very challenging uh, open problem. Yes, I completely agree. It was very, very good. Even for simplest case, for example, if you, uh, for the rectangle, I think you can do something, but if you have some uh, geometry in dimension two, I think it's already not very clear. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any other question? So in, in fact, I have one in the spirit of uh, the one of Eduardo, so I will, I will ask it. Um, so regarding the backstepping approach, for the heat equation, it seems that it is strongly related to, uh, to the Le Borobiano inequality. Yes. Right? So is there a way to start from the Le, Borobiano, from the Le Borobiano inequality and yeah, no, I think this is possible. You need to construct. Yeah. I think we can do the same in higher dimension, but we wanted to 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 give an example where we don't use any Carleman because the, the this inequality in higher dimension is related to Carleman estimate, and and here there is no. But I, I think with the, if you look to the paper by. Uh, Lebo and Robiano, I think using the estimate, you can construct also some uh, some feedback flow which gives you the, the stabilization in finite time. I never... But in, in principle, this feedback flow will depend only on the on the lambda first uh, eigenfunctions, right? Ah, no, the, the lambda is not related to the eigenfunction, in fact. The lambda is fixed, you, you fix some lambda and mm -hmm. then lambda. And you have the estimate of the, on the norm of Yolanda is less than, so it gives you an exponential decay rate, but the lambda, maybe the, the name lambda was not a good idea. It's not, it's not an eigenvalue. It's not related to eigenvalue, in fact. Mm -hmm. but by Le Bon Orbeno, it's called new, I don't know, I don't remember. It's, yeah, but, but somehow it tells you that you, you can uh, stabilize at, right, at rate exponential yes. minus lambda t. And exactly. In order to do that, if you look at, uh, I, have, uh, I think it's Russell work. In fact, you only have to look at the eigenvalues, which are higher. Ah, yes. Right. Uh, yes, that's possible. You, you look to the, you, you modify the first. For this packet, to, from the Le Borobiano inequality for this packet, can you construct uh, the, the lambda, which, which really, uh, plug your equation into the one you have, you see with the minus lambda u. Ah, no, I'm not sure this is like this. No, I, I think what you can do with the Le Bourbiano approach is find the feedback law, k lambda, such as the norm of k lambda is less than exponential c square root of lambda, and we give you a decay rate of exponential minus lambda two, but it doesn't transform the first system into the system with minus lambda. Okay. I think this key lambda is already, in fact, is in the paper by Le Bon Orbiano. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Well, I think no. Okay. Okay, so thank you again, uh, Jean-Michel. Oh, it was a pleasure. So this thank talk you.